Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 117. Oh, joining me this week, Ian Gibson. Hi, uh, joining me He's this here. week, Will Crosby. It's the two of us. We've got a very special guest joining us in just 31 minutes uh, to talk about the Mario movie. But until then, Ian and I are deciding to brave the new world as a couple of pals and uh, and just talk about life. Uh, if we're going meaning... to be a couple, I should probably leave the state of Florida. That's true. And we probably shouldn't launch rockets anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't believe I can't believe some pixel aerospace is over. That was a very successful season. It was a very successful season. I, you know, I, I bring it up every time, but landing on that asteroid <laughs> felt so good. <laughs> and I know yeah. I didn't do anything, but it still felt. Good. Oh, no, you helped. You helped. You really did. Like at several oh. points. It's, it's just that series was it's always a gamble because we are giving ourselves challenges and we are both bad at video games and That's like true. it is much easier for a stream to be successful and entertaining when when you complete the challenge. But when you don't complete a challenge, more likely than not, the stream is going to suck from an entertainment perspective. And and so it's a very it's risky proposition there. But we were five for six, which was insane. I can't believe it. we did some crazy stuff in Kerbal. It was awesome. Yeah, it makes me sad every time I see Kerbal, too sitting there in um in my steam getting updated mm -hmm. <laughs> every couple of weeks uh but uh, i'm just like it'll get there yeah well i i was thinking about playing some more of it just because so we didn't play it for sub pixel aerospace because it was literally too broken at launch and then i didn't want to play it at all in the middle of sub pixel aerospace because the key bindings are just slightly different enough especially mm. in the building zone that I didn't want to screw screw myself up. So I was only playing KSP one on and off stream. So I'm thinking about going back and giving it another shot because I I know it has performance issues. My machine seemed OK with it. I know it has game breaking bugs. I hope they have fixed those by now. You know? <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, the tutorials were really helpful and fun mm -hmm. and like taught you like the whole tutorial for getting to space was like the gravity turn and everything. Uh, which was yeah. helpful. And then um, the new building mode's cool. I still am watching, like, um, what's his name? Not Scott Manley. Scott Manley. Manley. No, Ma Matt Lone? Scott Manley. Um, oh, I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not. Mott Scanley. Power through it. Um, oh, oh. Scott Manley. Sorry, everyone. I just blew your ears out. Um, no, uh, Matt Lone. Uh, hmm. Scott Manley. Uh does uh videos and he was building this like hydrogen thing to go really far out into space and i was watching him do that and like the launch and everything is effortless but watching him build it he's still like stringing long pieces of struts between various pieces up and down the shaft to like make sure it's super structurally shut up super structurally <laughs> sound um and i'm just yeah, like I, I just i want things to work i, I don't want to try to yes. figure out that part yes. of it yeah, that was the thing was I, I appreciate struts. I know why they're in the game, but they are a fucking band aid. <laughs> like they should have yeah. fixed the, the physics system and wanted to so that if I attach two fucking parts together, they don't wobble like crazy. And that's that's why I've always been an anti strut guy as much as possible, because it's like I'm not going to take time to apply this fucking band aid because you have not fixed root causes, root cause yeah. problems with your with your game. Yeah, so that like makes me like. I would play that game if they were just giving me rockets, which I guess they can do. So maybe I'll hop in and just practice the second half of Kerbal Space Program, which isn't building the rockets. Well, um, I wonder I wonder if if it has Steam Workshop integration already like the first one did. So you can just download a bunch of people's stuff. Yeah, I, I think it does. So I, I, I can then because that's the thing. I always felt bad about not doing it all myself, but I'm like, I, need, I don't I won't get good at parts of it unless I have the thing that will get me to sp like. I'm not going to be able to practice getting to space if the rocket I'm building isn't good at getting to space. Um, I mean, um, I don't know. If that, that was one of the great things about KSP one when I discovered it a couple years in was like the cheat menu where I was like, I know this can get to space, but it's it's troublesome. It's always a little bit of a risky. It's hard to control. So I'm just going to launch it 
cheat mode, put me in orbit. OK, I'm ready to go. Um, yeah. And sometimes, honestly, I would even turn on infinite fuel because I'm like, look, I just want to I want to do the transfers, et cetera. I want to get there. I don't want to have to worry about fuel. And and that's 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 another way to kind of get around that that hurdle you're talking about. Yeah, I should do that. I always felt like it was cheating, but I I don't now like looking at it farther away. It's like, how do you really cheat a Kerbal Space Program? Because I'm not out there claiming I did it all. It's just like, oh, these are things yeah. that are part of it. And, and, and that's the cool thing about Kerbal is that it's it's grounded just enough in realistic orbital mechanics and rocket science that it's not so much about you building a rocket that's successful. It's more about you learning how to do these things and then applying them. So it doesn't mean you have to build the rocket, but like you're talking about, it's like, how do I how do I understand and 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 do the gravity turn? And if you got to use somebody else's rocket instead of a rocket you built, that's fine because you're still learning and applying the gravity turn. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So Kerbal Space, how did we how did. Why, why are we talking about Kerbal Space? Oh, you were talking about <laughs> some pixel aerospace. I forgot. Um, anyways, moving on. Uh, the chit chat section is scrapped this episode for the Mario <laughs> movie section. Um, no chit chatting allowed. So try to try to yeah, at least stay. shut the shut up. Stay on topic. Shut up. No <laughs> chit chat. The games I have been playing this week. Um, Ian, both of our names here say Fire Emblem. And yes. the ending part of that is different. Um, um I shut shut up. <laughs> you talked about Fire Emblem. You threw to me. You threw to me. <laughs> I know. I haven't really I, I think I've played another five, six hours of Fire Emblem Engage. I'm probably up to like chapter nine or ten, but I also got to the part where like the skirmishes and side missions started popping up on the map, and one of the tip articles I read was like Try and do those as much as you can because they level you up a lot. It, it it really lessens the difficulty curve later in the game and it gives you, you know, cool side characters and stuff. So I've been playing that. I played probably six hours this weekend and I enjoyed it, but I think I'm starting to burn out on it. Um, I think I'm just getting too old for these. Like I've played this game for like eight or nine hours, right? I would love for that to be the entire length of the game. You know, I would love to sit down and play a fire room for eight or nine hours, maybe a little bit less story, a little more missions. And let's say like 20, 25 missions overall, including side quests. And then I would just be like, bing, bing, boom. OK, great. Loved it. Great experience. But I know I'm only like a third of the way through and it's it's burning me out and it's nothing against the game. It's just I'm getting older. Uh, there's more games to play and there's more things for me to do in my life. So unless something really, really, really grabs me, even if I'm enjoying it, I'm probably not going to put more than 10 hours in it. I, I don't know. Am I crazy? Are you like that at all? Yeah, I've gotten that way. Um, I feel like I, less so of that and more of like I play a game a bunch and then I forget about it. And it's so hard for me to come back to it like yeah. that um, Wild Hearts. It's like I keep thinking about it. I should go back and play it more, uh, put more time into it. But I don't want to right now. I just want to burn. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, the game I have been putting some time into this week, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance for the uh -huh. GameCube. Uh, fired up my GameCube. Uh, it's great to be able to play that on the 4K TV and in bed and uh, in various on the toilet. I can play it. And, it's a uh, Steam Deck. Like genuinely yeah, so, curious. Steam Deck. Yeah, okay. Steam Deck. Um, today is the first day the game crashed on me. And I don't know mm. why. I think I might have overloaded it a little bit. I was scrolling of like a huge list of items and it mm. was like starting to hiccup and then it disconnected. Um, complaints with the Steam Deck a little bit. Uh, when you connect a Too switch. big, no battery life, <laughs> loud fan. I've got them. It costs money. Some... Uh... <laughs> I don't hate it. I just it ain't perfect, folks. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, I love it. And it's perfect. Um, the when you connect a Switch Pro controller to it, first of all, you can't turn the console on on, on can't turn the console on from the controller, which is that, annoying. That makes that makes sense. It's a PC. You yeah. can't do that with like ninety nine percent of PCs. But it's in sleep mode. Like I don't know. Just like let me like an oh, Xbox. It's in, it's in sleep mode. It's not full power down. Yeah. So well, I guess like, it depends. It depends. 
Anyways, um, so it won't do that. Plus, connecting the Bluetooth controller is uh, with the Switch controller. Sometimes when you're playing the game, if the controller dies at any point, when it or or disconnects, it working. not even dies. No, it reconnects as player two, and you can't ever put it back to player one. You have to and and you can't yeah. switch to the Steam Deck controls to continue playing the dolphin game I, I think it's a dolphin issue yeah it's um, a dolphin issue or the the controller connecting thing is a steam deck issue the game not switching back yes. to the steam deck controller is a dolphin issue so like yes i i get to the point where i have to then just force quit fire emblem if my controller dies in the middle of the fight um so that happened that the crash and something else oh my goodness uh happened three three times on the same mission and i was just like i'm not playing fire emblem anymore today because <laughs> i i don't want to deal with that again yeah um yeah it was just super frustrating but i am loving fire emblem path of radiance it plays really well the combat's good the little story in betweens are always fun you can like talk to your little characters after in like the in the bulk up thing the game's also like a, a little bit easier i'm playing on the advanced mode uh which is like the middling uh difficulty mm -hmm. and but you get like bonus xp so you can just like top off your characters in between missions um you can just like buy them uh you can buy them all their weapons and on the convoy and everything but it's just like there's other things where like i got a brand new character who's lower level and i just pumped like four or five levels into them from my bonus xp and that's like nice it's very nice because you, you don't have to sit there and be like, oh, he's almost level 10. Uh, and I need to like level. You ever think about stuff. how, I'm sorry, you said bonus XP. <laughs> you realize it's like way too close to bone sex P. That's what my life's all about, bro. Bone sex P. <laughs> Why is it about P? Wait, those b bone and sex are the same thing. Bonus <laughs> P. Bone sex P. Bonus? Yes. X? Yeah. P. And if you say it too quickly, say it too quickly. Bonus XP. Bony sex I thought P. you were going to say boner XP, which is the XP you rank up by having sex, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm almost at level two. <laughs> I'm still putting it into endurance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we all... <laughs> oh my god. Um, I'm about to prestige, bro. Dude, we would make so much money if we made an app where you put in your sex XP for like Chad Bros. Oh my god! But and you had to prove it somehow. <laughs> so it's it secret, you had to prove it was secretly so just... just a it was secretly just a revenge porn app. This is a terrible <laughs> joke. We need to kill. I didn't it. mean that part. I realized that as soon as it happened. Oh we have to consensually. <laughs> they give consent. Anyways, um. Fire Emblem. That's really all I've been playing this week. Um, Same. Same. I've been just well, putting TV on and playing on the Steam Deck, which is really I, nice. If you can shut up for a second. Jesus um, Christ. No chit chat. <laughs> I love this just like aggressive shut up character <laughs> that's been building for weeks. <laughs> I have been. I did play something else this morning. Oh, I played a little bit of the Hitman th Freelancer mode. Oh, Hitman 3. Hitman 3. Copy Lancer. of Hitman Free freelance. No, we because remember we figured out I owned it on I Xbox. But you and played so it on actually, PC, I thought. Yeah, it's on Game Pass right now. Um, <laughs> it's on Game Pass right now. <laughs> Apparently, I guess. Yeah. So so, anyways, I played it, and it's really cool. I'm just I'm not sure if I'm going to play more of it because it, <laughs> I'm very I'm very rusty at Hitman. It's been a long time since I played Hitman. And even when I played Hitman three, I just played it through each each level one time. And I was like, great Hitman. And then I put it down. So it's not like I like mastered Hitman three when I played it when that came out. And I'll give you an example. Like I wasn't doing terribly, but um, I was at Dartmoor. It was like the first freelancer mission. And I got spawned in an area with a bunch of people. And, and so I was like taking people out, but then I would get spotted. So I'd have to hide a little bit and take somebody else out. And um, what ended it for me was I like snuck over to somebody and like a person next to them turned around and walked away. And I was like, perfect. And I walked up to him and then I hit subdue 
and it just grabbed him by the back and shot him twice in the stomach. And I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> and then oh they just turned God. around and shot me. And I was like, oh, I forgot if you have the gun out. When you go to subdue, you automatically shoot them like I completely forgot about that. So I, I don't know if I'm going to hop back into it or not. Nothing against the game mode. Mm-hmm. I think I'm just literally too rusty to pray to play freelancer. I would have to go back to the original game and play that a bit. And I'm not super into that right now. So it's it's weird. You know, if we can real quick, um, I'd like to stray just a tiny bit in the general direction of chit chat because I'm not that worried about my gaming desert right now this week Mm because we got some stuff coming up next tuesday is minecraft legends next friday is advanced wars one plus two boot camp which i'm probably not going to play and dead island two which i may play if that gets good reviews so there's there's games coming folks and there's games that i i still haven't played dead space um (gasps) hogwarts legacy is in a far back pocket if i ever get super bored i can play that there's all sorts of stuff on Game Pass. So it's it's weird. There's all sorts of stuff to play this year. But this week I was just kind of a little bit of Fire Emblem, but then I haven't played really anything the past four days. So That's yeah, how it goes. I, I've just been playing Fire Emblem and uh, Oblivion. Great game. Beautiful game. Beautiful. Uh, anyways, you want to hop into the, a little bit of the news here? Yeah, let's get through the news here. Is that you saying that? That's so good. Yeah, I practice. Uh, folks, we're here. I don't, I, you know, I was messing around with the local chat overlay today because I had to do some magic and um, do legitimately do not know what happened to the news icon. It is simply not part of the scene anymore. And I thought to myself, I should re-add it. And then I didn't. So uh, there's no news label. So sorry for everyone who watches this and is like, I want to know when the news section is by scrubbing through it. You're, you're not going to know. So You're screwed. You're done. You're newsed. Uh, north, Anyways, east, west, and south. Uh, um, I noticed that under our new format, we're each supposed to pick a news article and then we kind of dive into it. And you didn't pick any. So yeah. why don't you... Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot because yeah. you fucked up. How about you yeah. pick one of these news articles to talk about? Well, I was going to talk about how hilariously funny it is that um, the Suicide Squad game has been delayed in February 2024. Is it funny, though? I feel like it's just sad at well, this point. It's funny because we were talking about it and I was like, it got delayed a little bit. And we were talking about like. I well, I had mentioned, what if they changed the system that they're working on? Like, what if they didn't make it a looter schluter? And you were like, that's not enough time for that to happen. And yeah. now they have delayed it even further. And yes. I still don't think it's enough time to do that. That's but what, I that's think what, that's what Grub and Shire were saying was from what they heard, this is not going to change the core mechanics of the game. It's yeah. just polish. Exactly. And I was like, it's still not enough time, but there's going to be like through the halfway point. And I'm just thinking in the minds of the developers where they're like, what if we did change to this? And And then there's going to be a point where they're not going to have enough time and they're either going to release this project that they're trying to bandaid up or they're going to delay again by adding um, another year or something to it. I don't know. It's just uh, it's just crazy to me that they it's it's yeah, it's like people were anticipating this game, right? It's Rocksteady. They haven't put out a a Rocksteady game since I believe Arkham Knight. And um, there aren't a whole lot of games like that. So there's there's a dearth in that gaming micro niche and there's also a dearth from that, you know, well-established developer. And then they showed the trailer and then they showed some gameplay and they showed their whole ass and it wasn't looking good. And now they're going to delay the game, but they have no intention of changing their ass. So in February 2024, they're going to show their ass again and it's going to be the same fucking ass. So it's like, I, like this game's going to be a solid fucking six out of ten. Like there are oh, going to yeah. be parts of it that are great, but a majority of it's going to be bland and there are going to be parts of it that are going to be god awful. And it's just like we can all see it coming a mile away. Part of me feels like the way I, I guess this is a good way to describe it. The way Destiny 1 was where it was a really good looking and feeling six out of ten 
is the way I look at some games like this from higher developers where I'm like that it's like almost like Avengers I feel like not yeah. to some extent I don't think that played super well or actually no I think it did play super well but I don't think the story was no, great it didn't. Played um, terribly. something in that would I remember someone saying it was done well anyways whatever was done well was the like that could have been a 6 out of 10 plays well but it wasn't and I feel like this is yeah. the next one where I'm like I could see Suicide Squad playing really well and having a fun time, but just like the stuff that's shoved on top of it isn't going to be fun. Um, yeah, this just feels like, you know, like you said, the Avengers, this is this is all the hallmarks of it should be amazing. They took their time on it. They've got they've got great IP behind it. You've got a great studio. You've got people that are dying to play it. You're not doing anything bonkers crazy. You're not making an NFT game. You're not making an MMO with you know, 10 million people per server. You're not trying to break boundaries here. You're just making a solid fucking video game. And you had all that working for you. And somehow you're still putting out something that looks like a solid six out of 10. And it's just like, how could you, how could you fuck that up? How could you, sh how could you show the public that see their reaction? No, you need to delay the game, add the delay and still decide to commit to your original vision. Like, yeah. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying put the game out now and I'm not saying February is enough time for you to change the core. But this it just feels like they are not getting the message, which is you need to drastically change some of the core mechanics going on in this game. Otherwise, it's not going to be received well. Also, I didn't realize. This game was originally slated to come out May. No, not May 26th. Uh, 2021 2022 i was trying to see if there was an official date in 2022 it was supposed to come out probably just um, probably just a year but it was originally said to come out 2022 and also um i wonder i mean this has to weigh in on the decision that since hogwarts legacy sold gangbusters i wonder if they were like we can afford to push this back like the big wigs being like if this is the public sentiment and you need more time blah 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 blah, blah. like i wonder if any of that came into play um i will also note this tweet picture is terrible. It looks really bad. It's just a, it's just a picture of text, right? No, it's a picture of the Suicide Squad facing away, but then there's a gradient oh, yeah. black box, and the text is super tight in the box. So it's just like, what, what is it? And it's what so hard to read, too. Yeah, um, I just... Hey, let's talk about a good game. Let's oh. talk about Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom. Oh. I, I was hesitant to watch this because they got all my hype with the like six or seven minute direct they did a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. And I was Mr. like, do I want to be? Gameplay. Yeah. And I was like, do I want to be spoiled by this? But at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be able to avoid this. So I might as well watch it. And I'm glad I did. This game just continues to surprise the light. They're adding so much new stuff. They are like reviving all that like breath of the wild enthusiasm I had while playing the game where I'm like, what's that? What's that? I want to go over there. I want to go over there. I can't wait to explore this world. This game looks phenomenal, right? Um, it looks so good. I put that trailer on and normally with just like with trailers at work, it's like, Oh, we don't really promote them anymore. Cause they're not great and or stuff. But I watched through that trailer this morning and I was like, we got to put this up somewhere. Like, yeah. flip it because it's so good it's gonna be so big and i don't know if it's gonna end up doing numbers or anything but just watching through that the the ganondorf reveal the um hey can i ask you, can i ask you well hey well can i ask you a question i know what you're gonna ask me are is ganon and ganondorf are they diff different or is that the same person same i person. don't ganondorf is the human form of ganon Quote unquote, Who's, human what, form. What, Ganon what is, is the is giant Ganon? the giant like uh pig monster at the end of Breath of the Wild. He's like the spirit, dark spirit of evil. That's his like final okay. form. So they're they're altered forms of the same. Okay. Yeah. That's I just need it. Okay, thank you. That's why like in the different Zelda games, he sometimes looks different. It's not always Ganondorf. Like Ganondorf is specific. That's, that's why he's ugly in Twilight Princess. Because all exactly. games are ugly. <laughs> Well, I, and also like Ocarina of Time, he was like, like the whole point of him being a man was like he infiltrated and could do all this sort of stuff. But I think he's always Anyways. been a Gerudo king. Anyways, um, Dark Evil it looks Spirit like Ganon. 
is bad. It looks like they're going harder on the story in this one. If you remember, the first one was pretty light on story. It had great characters, but it was always like, go over there. Here's a character. He's got a little story. He's got he's got his uh, his what do they call them? Guardians, the four guardians. Mm -hmm. And then I don't think there were champions, the four champions. He's got his little champion story. Oh, and then there's that. But they were really light on the link story. And this one feels like they're leaning into the story more. And I'm I mean, honestly, I, I I'm typically don't give two fucks about a Zelda story, but I enjoy the presentation of it. And this one presentation is that's some real anime Kino right there. That's some Japan animation yeah. I can get behind. And yeah, and they they were showing like it seemed like NPCs had a lot bigger role. There was Link driving yep. a cart full of NPCs at one point. There was like a group of them doing yeah. stuff, villages. And so he, I hope and he put the cart together. Did you notice that that it was it had the little oh I didn't notice glowy that. things. So it looked like a normal cart, but the wheels were had the had the magic oh. glue on them and all that. So I'm hoping there's a lot of my favorite one of my favorite parts of uh, I said the Last of Us, uh, Zelda the last one was uh the terry town like i liked putting that town together and like seeing yeah and the music and I so i hope i wanted more of that it was it was very minimal yeah i liked it but i was like give me more give me more and i feel like they're gonna give us with that and that's that's like great. i hope there's a terry town 2.0 like because of some, everything the um the first terry town like fell into that crater or whatever and like you can then expand out the crater like i hope there's some sort of like fun reason that you yeah. can still do terry town if it's a completely different place that's fine and terry town's a new place or an old place that's fine but that whole mechanics fun there was a mech at one point there was underground there <laughs> was it wasn't okay we got to talk about the mech real quick it wasn't so much a mech it was it was a it was an enemy camp walking rock structure true yes and, and then there was just a fucking like fridge like tall fridge looking like 30 feet tall vehicle that you had built that you were standing on top of because so mech, mechs are cool and everything and this is not to downplay the game was fucking weirder than mechs you know yeah. <laughs> it was like so it like you could just tell like okay they, they established you have to build this before and this looks like it is just a fucking roaming thing so this is just i don't want to say a random encounter but uh, my, my guess is it's not even a main fucking story mission thing. It's just you keep seeing this walking stone camp and you normally avoid it because you don't know how to get up there until one day you're like, OK, I'm going to finally build some sort of fucking vehicle mechanism ambush thing so I can go joust them with my 30 foot rock vehicle that I cobbled yeah. together. And that's cool. That's so cool because I, I'm just going to shit on AAA games real quick. Every oh, other God. fucking AAA game would have been like day one pre-production on the whiteboard mech sequence and they would have been like cinematics give us mech and uh animation give us give mech, us mech. Quick, quick time place give us mech and it would have just been like a fucking whoa i'm holding the controller but all these cinematics are happening and they want me to press this button to get inside whoa it's an on rail section but zelda's like no fuck you man it's a fucking walking rock camp <laughs> <laughs> you want to get it? You got to get up there somehow. So good fucking luck, buddy. Yeah. Like that's fucking love that. Yes. There, um, there were, uh, 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 uh bubbles, like time water yeah. bubbles that they were jumping through. There were rockets. Um, yeah. That it, it looked like, it, it looked like a lot more puzzles and not just shrine puzzles, but like dungeon. puzzles. Yes. Which I'm like, yeah, give me more of that from Zelda because, that was one of the complaints about Breath of the Wild well earned, which is that it really only had four dungeons and it felt like they were showing a lot more variety of dungeons in this. So I'm hoping for more. Honestly, if you just give me four, I'm happy because they're fantastic dungeons there. But there's new dungeons in this. That's what I mean. Yeah, Um. I I was really hoping there would be. Um, God damn it. I lost it. Sorry. Never mind. Uh, but the rock. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Uh, it, it was like they someone on the team really liked Just Cause and was like, hey, what if we did all the like connective things from Just Cause, but we gave you unlimited amounts of like the goo and stuff? Yeah. Uh, and we just make all these rockets. So. Um, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it was. Very exciting. And and like I said, this was the trailer that did the hype for me. I, I want to watch it again because it was so there's so much in it. So I'm excited for that. Um, do you want to tell me about uh, the Ukraine war? Yeah, uh, real quick. Hey, Kyle. Welcome. Hi, Hi Kyle. 
Um, so this the story is fucking great because it started out. Do you guys know anything about the uh, the Ukraine war leaks that kind of popped off uh, last week? Some of the documents that came out. Yeah. Is uh, that the Minecraft one? Wow. Spoilers. Will you piece of shit? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is so hard to talk about. So I'll just I'll just give the high level, which is basically um, there were some documents that started appearing in the news um, and through 4chan a week or two ago, and they are U.S. military classified documents detailing uh, basically Ukrainian and Russian military positions and estimated losses. Um, wow. And they're basically just like fucking slides from like like U.S. government uh, like PowerPoints. And they have like confidential non for which means like not for foreign eyes, et cetera, all over it. So but the thing was, the funny thing was it started because p people posted it in 4chan because they were just like uh, there were Russians posting on 4chan being like, no, we're doing fine. We're not losing that many. And somebody was like, oh, yeah, well, look at this fucking document. It says you've lost so oh many my people. God. <laughs> and it was just out there for a couple of days until like journalists started picking up on it. And they're like, that's a real fucking document. Where did that come from? And so so the original story was basically saying uh, I've got a PC gamer link in our in our behind the scenes notes, which was one of the early ones, which basically said, <laughs> Uh, this headline's great. Quote, I can't believe this keeps happening. Leaked Ukraine war plans spread in part through a Minecraft Discord server, end quote. And it's kind of a funny reference, you know, um, War Thunder Forum and, and War Thunder uh, Discord keeps having problems because people are leaking military documents about tanks and, and airplanes. And so this was another kind of quote unquote funny one, which is, you know, they traced it from 4chan back to a Minecraft Discord. And they said, uh, you know, somebody was leaking some classified documents. Well, uh, the Guardian and then the Washington Post yesterday revealed even more information through their investigation and basically realized there was a uh, a very tight knit, approximately 20 member discord that's been up for about a year and a half of relatively uh, uh, right wing individuals. And they were all centered around one person who had access to this classified documents and had been posting about 300 plus classified documents on this discord server since I think it was November wow. of last year. And those documents have been leaking. Um, it's kind of interesting because the Ukraine ones are super easy to find because people on Twitter are just posting pictures of them. The other ones I've, I haven't seen them, but the journalists and other people have them because you see all these splinter stories where they're like, Hey, here's a story about how Russia literally almost shot down a, uh, a British surveillance plane with 20 people on board uh, in the middle of last year. And it came out of one of these documents. And then there's another one being like, you know, hey, uh, the U.S. has zero confidence in, you know, Australia's plan to X, Y, Z. You know, the U.S. thinks that China is weak in X, Y, Z. And it's coming out of these documents, which are now being called the Discord leaks. So it, it's just wow. this very, it's insane. It's just very weird convergence with the gaming community because, you know, Discord is largely gamers. And so all these journalists are just like, well, uh, wh what is it? Gamers leaking these like, how does this relate to gaming? And then there's gaming sites picking up on it. And at the end of the day, like it's it's uh, I saw I think it was the Washington Post or New York Times today said uh, this is subjective, but they basically said it's the largest leak of U.S. classified information in the last 10 years. Um, and I could believe that pretty much since Snowden. Um, and it's just crazy that it, it that it started on a discord server for Minecraft and for like gamers and spread through the gamer community for literally months before it finally hit the mainstream. And then the Pentagon was aware of it and they've arrested the person they believe leaked it today. It's just, is wild. that, is that, that has to do with, the, it's a, just because I was tracking this whole thing and it must be the, the same tweet that I posted with the marble counter is how they tracked him yes, down. That's the same one. Yeah. Which is that, completely amazing. That, that was the Washington Post tracking that person down and saying and trying to identify them. Wow. So that's not necessarily how the FBI got them, but yeah. the FBI did did arrest them today. Um what, what I'll just say it's kind of cool tech. So reality winner who was the one who leaked a, a classified document a couple of years ago, the way that they got her was she provided, there were two ways. Number one was she provided a scan of the document to the intercept, I believe to Glenn Greenwald, if I'm not mistaken. And there are hidden trace elements 
in yep. most classified documents. So they could look at the scan and say, OK, we know that this came from this person or from this group, et cetera. And the other thing was she wasn't very good at it because the way she accessed the document, the document was protected in such a way that they know every single person who accesses it and when. So they just like went through it and were like, OK, who pulled this document recently? And they're like this person. And they're like, <laughs> and that person lines up with the trace elements and they were knocking on her front door like the next day. So I don't know how the FBI tracked it down, but the countertop, the 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 countertop, the pictures, the Steam profile linked with the it was the discord linked to the Steam profile, which went to the Instagram, which got pictures of him and his parents house that gave them pictures of the countertop and the floor tile that matched up with pictures of the leaked documents. That's how That's the Washington wild. Post was able to track it down today. I told Jake to delete his account. <laughs> um, yeah. God damn it, Jake. Um, Kyle's here because we're going to talk about the Mario movie. Look at that. I put a little Mario there and he's going to teach us. He's here to help with the Mario. Um, uh, Luigi. <laughs> um. <laughs> First of all, we've all seen the the Luigi Mario movie. Uh, That's how Kyle most saw it a, call a it, week yeah. and day, week and day ago. Yeah, yeah, I saw it Sunday morning. Hey, before we get into it, yeah, I, I saw it in in D box. You guys know D box? Yeah, with the sheets, the sheets, or the uh, seats rumble, right? Yeah. So I, I, so it was kind of weird. I was like, hey, let's go see this movie. I'm not expecting it to be that good. And I just kind of want to get it out of the way. So I was like, let's go Sunday morning, like matinee prices. They were like nine dollar ticket prices. And, and the th this theater was supposed to be mostly empty. And then I was like, wait a minute. They have a, like a 1030 a.m. D box showing. <laughs> and I was and I was like, warm up like the seats. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to go see this movie and it's a fucking blockbuster movie, it, it's the same thing I did for Jurassic World, where I was like, I don't think this movie's going to be that good, but I'm going to go there and I'm going to get a Coke and I'm going to get a popcorn. And I'm going to sit in the fucking fancy seats and I'm going to be like, show me a blockbuster, baby, because if you're making me go to a shitty fucking movie theater instead of watching <laughs> this at home, <laughs> then give me the experience. And so and so we did. We didn't get the matinee prices. We ended up paying a decent amount for the D box. But uh, D box, I, I'm just curious, how do you guys feel about D box? It's It's not terrible, but it's not amazing. And it's like. It's kind of OK for some movies. What do you guys think? So I saw uh, Rise of Skywalker. Okay. In not I don't know if it's D box, but the seats actually like shifted and there was like water spray and stuff like that. Is, I don't oh. think that's D. -box. That's more than D box because okay. D box is just is just shifting, rumbling. Oh, OK. All right. Well, I, I mean, I've experienced a step beyond D box and I was not a <laughs> yeah. fan. But to be fair, it was Rise of Skywalker, which no one is a fan of so yeah but not a box is i feel like i saw i saw mario on imax and the seat had us all the seats in the new imax uh theaters have uh subwoofers under them so they rumble like a lot and there was quite a bit of rumbling going not as much as john wick uh four but there was a lot so mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't add anything to my experience yeah um, yeah i can see that you, you, tried, you, you ever you ever taken the d will you ever tried the D? Sat on the D? Are we specifically talking about D box? Yeah, you ever rode the D? The D box. Hard. Yes. Okay, yeah. so my answer can be no. Then I, I've this is the first day I've heard of it. <laughs> uh, I, I would say try it at least once. It's not terrible. Try um, the D box. Either. However you want to take. I it. will. Mm. I will try the one I haven't tried. Let's <laughs> okay. let's put it at that. Um. Folks, we're going to be talking about the Mario movie, so spoilers abound. Uh, so if you've been listening, which I doubt it, uh, other than Lucifer, who's here live in the chat, uh, head on out of here if you don't want to hear spoilers for the Mario movie. I saw it on Saturday. A friend of the Subpixel channel, Mr. Awesome, who helps out with the Sip Studios stuff, um, he uh, rented out a movie theater because Mario's his favorite thing ever. Oh. Um and it was i think it was one of those like i saw an amc deal for like renting out a theater and it was like, like super cheap 50 bucks for in a whole theater or something yeah like and that. there were like 40 but, of us but wait but they're still doing that and for 
for new releases because i it's, thought that was more yeah. of a pandemic only thing it's just a um a normal theater though like it's yeah, not it's just like a normal the premium but, stuff. but still you can fit like 100 people in a normal theater they're losing money on that that's weird they're they're counting on the snacks supplementing for it but yeah. i don't and everyone bought they, snacks they were doing it when i was there so i, I don't know um man we should do that we should rent a movie theater anyways um the audio was super low and the screen wasn't that bright um but nothing could Welcome stop me movie theaters from watching the mario movie mario what is it the super mario bros movie super mario, mario bros movie bros movie oh it's yeah. that's what it's called the super mario brothers movie i believe i believe there yeah. is a the. featuring right chris pratt and charlie day and yes, Keegan Michael Key and Keegan Michael Key Mario as yeah. Toad, Jack Black, Bowser. with Anya Taylor Joy. You ever look and up how they do those? Like it's Charles specific, Barney. like with yeah. and and is like for sp specific types. Of, I, yeah, and then there's the call sheet. Yeah, et cetera. <laughs> Shut up! I hate you. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> quickly, we're gonna go around the room here. I just want your quick out of ten. <laughs> what do you think of it? Kyle, we heard yours last week, but if you could repeat it for us. I've I've softened a little bit, just my Ooh. opinion. It's still I am still not a fan of the story. Technically, it's very well animated. The uh action scenes when they have them are fine. And uh I just really could not get into the story from like a pacing angle i it, it had some real bad pacing problems i get that it's a kids movie my argument for that is that uh lots of kids movies work on multiple levels and i feel like this one just rode really hard into the this is a six to ten year old boys kids movie like that's what this is if you're in that age bracket i guess it could be for girls too um who cares about girls i certainly don't uh yeah, so that's that's my thought. I, I wasn't I wasn't super into it, but it was fine. It was okay. It's it it's fine. It's gonna make a billion dollars. Who gives a shit? Gotcha. Um, Ian, no explanation. <laughs> What's your quick uh, number? <laughs> just the number. Uh, just tell me. You're not no, allowed to explain it at no. all. Uh, you know what? A number out of a hundred? Are we doing? Five stars, half stars. What's Out of the ten. You know what's fucked up is the fucking four star rating system is just it makes no fucking sense. It's I know, dog a four shit. is an eight, um, and an yeah. eight, and an eight is an eight. Uh, I would give it. I would give it out of five stars. No, I would give it three. I would give it three out of five stars. I would give it a solid ni nine out, out of ten. Of hundred <laughs> um no i would give it a five out of ten six out of ten um i feel like i'm i'm like five five out of ten like two out two of and four. a half out of five yeah. stars yeah. I'm, I'm at i'm at i'm at seven out of ten maybe a little bit higher than that um you know mostly just broadly i didn't want ian to talk so mostly it was just because i agree with you kyle pacing fell off in a lot of areas like okay it, but wait but wait wait wait. we gotta talk about this because this is kind of picking my crawl a little bit because i i saw a lot of complaints about this before i went into the movie i was expecting this i'm not saying the pacing was perfect but people were like this is a fucking speed run of a mario movie etc but at the same time this movie is 92 fucking minutes which was the most exciting thing to me going into this movie was being oh like, yeah finally fucking hour and a half long movie and there were definitely some parts where it felt like they were skipping a little bit of development but it also felt like they got a lot into that 90 minutes but it didn't feel like it was breakneck skipping things the way that for example no. the last of us series was like skipping around a little bit at parts and this felt like i would say brisk but it was not I wouldn't necessarily say pacing problems. So I'm curious to hear why you guys would say that. Well, I mean, pacing doesn't have to mean the introduction of certain things. It can mean the expanding of certain scenes to fit like the narrative better, right? Like you can introduce a ton of stuff in a 90 minute movie, but where you choose to spend your time in that 90 minutes largely depends on what type of movie it is and what story you're telling. And I wish it had been like 10 minutes longer and they had used that 10 minutes to like 
well, basically give Luigi the latter half of the movie <laughs> back because he's pretty much gone until the very end and give a little bit more to Peach because Peach was the one character that they were like, oh, we're going to give a cursory glance to her backstory in its, insofar as here's when she enters the Mushroom Kingdom and then now she's a princess. And they had this really emotional emotional moment with her and the fire, uh, the, the flower power sort of stuff. Uh, under the tree and it was it was beautifully animated but the story just moved so fast the pacing of that scene just moved so fast and i was like this is this is for kids because kids don't care about yeah. that stuff they need to have it in there to be like we're slowing this part down so we could ramp up right before the the yeah, yeah. Uh, donkey kong introduction and, and um, i can see that S saying they need 10 minutes i think for me the whole brooklyn fight at the end fucking get rid of it Get oh, rid of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End it at the wedding. That gives you your 10 minutes and then spread that out throughout to give a little bit more, a yeah. couple more lines of dialogue, a little bit more emotional impact that. I, OK, now you explain it that way. I can understand that. Yeah. And I, I don't think that movie needs to be longer. I think the time they no. have, they need to spend better is basically yeah. what you guys are saying. And, and I agree. I first kind of picked up on that when Mario first gets to the kingdom. Yes. He gets into the castle really fast. And then immediately, immediately... Toad, Toad is like, okay, we're going like, I'm no, no, yeah. no explanation as to why I should trust you. I'm just gung ho. We're going to go. And it, it doesn't. And matter. they were immediately in the castle. Immediately. She was on. She was like, oh, you're coming with me immediately training, failing at training. And then immediately being like, it's okay to fail. Like, so, in so a okay. Matter of a little seconds. bit of pushback what, on what? that. They could have used one or two more lines, but to make it clearer. But Peach was like, "Holy shit, you're a fucking human, and we're on the same team because Bowser has your brother, and I want to go to Bowser too." I think that's oh, where yeah. I, thirty seconds more would have made it clearer. But it's not like there was no explanation at all there. It was it just, just felt too like brisk. it just felt like every scene. This is gonna sound stupid, but I don't know the words to explain it. But it felt like every different scene was after every other scene and there was never a scene <laughs> no, no no there was never like an establishment like we're here doing this and then let's cut in a little bit closer and do a side off scene from the main scene there was it felt like there was never that it was just big scene big scene big scene big, like there was never a smaller scene within it was yeah, always cutting every scene was cutting to a new set of characters it was, it was or very back to the old set yeah yeah it, it felt like three storylines that were put together in editing and not put together when it was written. If that makes any sense to you. Like, yeah. I, I never felt like they were connected until they met up and joined a scene together. They were never like, what the heck is constantly? It? I don't, I don't you know I'm not really buying that. That's, I mean, that's just different plots that don't come together until they come together. But that's what I, that's what I mean. Like there was, it never felt why, why were we cutting away from them now? Because I want to like lean into this a little bit longer and yeah, learn about I, I these characters, that. but we're when already they, moving on back to back to Luigi, back to back to them out there, back yeah, to yeah, this. Yeah. Like it always guys, felt like I never knew who it was going to cut to. Do you know James Patterson, the author? No, fuck no, I don't want to know him. Okay, I know of him. I don't want to know. Him. I know. <laughs> of him as well. No, you have you have the right opinion because he's a piece of shit. Um, he writes this. I read it when I was in like middle school. It was called Maximum Ride. It's about these people who are genetically engineered to have like wings or something like that. Yes. But the chapters are only like three to four pages long. So oh, every yeah, every like four or five pages is a new chapter. And that's kind of what the movie felt like, where it was like segmented to the point of now we're starting something new. Now we're starting right. something new. And, it, it and the just... next chapter didn't didn't pick up from the previous chapter. It was just a new starting from like three yeah. chapters ago. And you're like, yeah. wait, where am I? I, um, I mean, I kind of see that, but I, I think I don't want to give them a pass on this, but I could see them doing that because a lot of fucking modern Hollywood, especially fucking Marvel and how they've influenced this is what are our big fucking set pieces? We need to have five to seven big fucking set pieces in this movie. And how do we connect between them? And so when the movie becomes 90 minutes, but you're still stuck with that, that, that ethos of five to seven big set pieces, you have to fucking rush it, you know? And so that's not giving them a pass at all. But I, I think that is more a symptom of modern fucking action cinema and modern blockbuster cinema than it is necessarily this movie because they had the shorter runtime, but the way it is in theaters right now, you have to get five, you know, five to seven set pieces, et cetera. And so because of that, they had to sacrifice the in-between. I saw an article with the headline that Shigeru Miyamoto, um, he's an executive producer on, on the movie, and I think he helped with like 
scripting as far as whoever wrote it like he had input and he according to this article said that he did not want to focus on story very much and he wanted to focus mainly on the action and i think that's interesting from him because i mean like people always say when they're talking about how the movie shouldn't uh, have necessarily a great story because the games don't ever have great stories. Um, I disagree. I think Super Mario Odyssey actually has a very good story um, and has yeah. actually really powerful emotional beats. Like I, I played that game and I, I actually got a little teary eyed at the end because everything came together, the action, the ending of the story, the music, it all worked for me. And if they can do that in the games and Shigeru Miyamoto obviously has a lot of input with the games they should be able to translate something like that to the to the movie and for me it just didn't it didn't connect it felt super surface level and people always want to say oh it's it's just a, a nostalgic movie because you see and remember you know you you hear and remember and you can do that without it feeling tacky and with and without it feeling kind of just added on because they said well people want to hear this so or people want to see this yeah yeah but i i would say though this movie has a lot of story in it. It has a lot of world building. It has a lot of lore in it that is not coming from the games. And I have to applaud that. Like, like, I'll put you on the fucking spot. You've got the money. You got a gun to your head. They're about to drown your puppy. Your whole family is going to be bombed in their house. Write the fucking Super Mario Brothers movie. You couldn't write it that good. You would could, not be able to fucking write it way better no. than they wrote it. No, yeah. Yeah. You, could, you could not. You could not. You're you could fucking not take... wrong, Ian. You're so no. fucking listen, wrong. Listen, I'm sorry. Let me make my point. You are... Let me make my point. No, no, no. Let me no. make my no. fucking point. No. Ian, shut no, up. I'm still talking. I'm still I don't talking. Care. You're wrong. You're what absolutely fuck, wrong. Now listen you can make me. Let me make my point. The amount of, of ways that they weaved in the different characters, the different areas, the different nostalgia, like just the fact that they go up to make the the cart and they've got the fucking Mario Kart eight. You would not be able to write a movie so well that does such good fan service and still works. It's not a perfect movie, but I was astounded at how well it does work. I, I guarantee you I could write something better. I don't think so. I don't think you can make something that is as crowd pleasing as that movie. And that's nothing against you. It's just, I, I think did, I that is a fucking think, crowd policing movie. I think a lot of other people in Hollywood who are established writers could do way better. Why, why should the oh, interest be yeah. on me necessarily? Get a better writer. I, I don't, I don't think so. You don't think any other screenwriter but in remember, Hollywood remember, could write something remember better? Remember before this movie ever came out, before we saw any trailer, they said, we're making a Super Mario Brothers movie. What did we all do? We all shrugged our shoulders and said, how, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Nobody fucking knew what to do with it. And they made something that is packed full of nostalgia. That whole fucking movie is a smile fest for everybody that knows Mario from 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 fucking Odyssey to Super Mario Brothers to Mario Kart to Mario Tennis. You're fucking loving the whole movie, no matter which angle you came at it from. They wanted to make a kid friendly, family friendly, 90 minute nostalgia fest about Super Mario Brothers. And they succeeded at it when everybody else said, how do you make a Super Mario Brothers movie? I you're coming from the assumption that everybody is thinking like that. I do not know anyone else who was thinking, how are they going to do that? I heard a lot of people saying, oh, that's cool. I'm excited to see it. That's no, that's, that's the conversation we had over and over again on this very podcast was, I guess it's just going to be a generic kids movie. I guess. I mean, I don't even know. It doesn't even have a story. What are you supposed to do? You know, there's so many different games. It's not there's a steel storyline. None of them have a storyline. What are you supposed to do? Nobody knew how to handle that. And they handled it with grace. They didn't make a perfect movie, but they nailed what they were trying to do. I just That's I my think point. I think your argument saying that it can't be done better is completely wrong. It was done yeah, and it was done I, in the I, way that it was done. But that's I, not, I'm not, I'm not say saying it can't be better. Be, I'm not saying it can't be done better. I think you guys are just harping too much on the flaws without realizing what they were able to accomplish well, clearly which is cl huge clearly huge. from a critical standpoint we are not the only people who feel the way we do there's a significant chunk of people who agree not to say that either side is right or wrong but there's something fundamentally off about the way that this movie is structured and 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 plotted and I think it's because they went at it from a really childish angle for the purposes of making a kids movie and making a lot of money and clearly that's working I, yeah, but, I, I so, think so, so real quick, just on that point, uh, Patrick Klepek had a very good point, which is that, yes, this is a kid's movie, but you can't just shrug that off. You can't say it's a kid's movie. It's easy to make kids movies, et cetera. 
it's still hard to make a kids movie that is entertaining. Yeah, and they did it. Look at Pixar. They, they made a they they made a movie that is a kids movie. It's satisfying for kids. It may not have an adult element to it, but it also fully fulfills that that Super Mario Brothers nostalgia all the way through. It doesn't have to be a perfect movie. I'm not saying it couldn't be better, but given what they what they oh, have you were tasked you, with, you literally just said made, that it couldn't be better. That was the argument you just made. No, not that it couldn't be better. It's it's that it's that you guys are shitting on it. But I'm saying, OK, what would you have done that would have been better starting from scratch telling you make a Super Mario Brothers movie? You don't know anything about it. That's a blank fucking canvas because of how much you would have to pull from and try and put together. And I am genuinely surprised at how well the movie worked, considering how much they had to put together and make it. Yeah, work. Well, and it does my work. argument is like I, I get it's Mario going to the, sil the, the silver screen. Is that TV? The golden screen, screen yeah. the diamond screen um, for the first time. So you want to hit it big, but it's the same way I feel about, oh, how are they going to do the next Mario game? Where is it going to take place? What's it going to do? Like, I would have rather seen Mario just on an adventure and not his origin story. I think yeah. if you said, Will, write a better movie than the nostalgia hitting bombastic thing they just put out, I don't think I could do that, but I could write... I couldn't. Someone could write a better movie without those limitations on it. I didn't find any of the nostalgia stuff cool. The only thing I thought was neat was the Mario Kart thing. Like, yeah. that hit me. But outside of that, I thought the over-reliance on older Mario movie music was too much. Whoa. It was went and, too far. And the, um, and the reliance on like... 80s, 80s music. Why is 80s that music I in, I also a, in a Mario was weird. movie? Um... I would have rather had just Mario music than the 80s yeah, music. That's... And it was like clips yeah. of 80s music. It, they weren't yeah. there very long. And the the point, I think, again, there are good kids movies. There are good kids movies that are good for kids and adults. This was not a kids movie meant for adults at all, I don't think, other than the nostalgia poll. Um, yeah, there were good kids fine. moments in it. No, I, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm saying as a kids movie, that's fine. Um, I just never felt it was really hitting that stuff. Um, and then on top of all of that, on top of all of that, I thought the voice cast was terrible. Was I thought they bad. genuinely did a bad job. I, I did not want us to believe this, but Chris Pratt was fucking f no fine I, as Mario. Completely it wasn't, fine. It wasn't, I wasn't even completely fine. Chris Pratt was, he was passable. Right. People were fine. I thought they could have done much better. I think yeah. looking at everyone yes. in that movie and the way Jack Black played Bowser was the best thing of that movie he was excellent yeah. as bowser he put on a voice he made his funny songs whatever he was tasked with but everyone else came across really weird i liked i didn't i liked the funny voices in the commercial at the beginning uh i didn't think they needed to go that hard if they were to make the rest of the movie but something about charlie days and chris pratt's voice coming out of mario and luigi just it felt weird and not in the fact that i don't I love the Lego movie. I don't mind Chris Pratt. I love Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but their voices are too recognizable to me as those characters that it, it, it took me out of it. And I'm not well, saying they minute, did a bad a job. Because Chris Pratt, he was having a slight Italian accent throughout the movie. He was probably the most other than Toad that was outside of their normal voice. Yeah. But I'm saying I, I don't think, think it should have been. Job. I don't think it should have been Chris Pratt doing that. I think someone else no, could have done no, a better no. Italian voice. Yeah. Again, it's not down to Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt's obviously a good actor. He wouldn't be cast in things if he was a bad actor. They're all good actors. I didn't believe them as Mario and Luigi, but not because they did a bad job. Because I just see Chris Pratt and Charlie Day and Anna Taylor, Anya Taylor Joy, and Keegan Michael. Like that is the reason. Yeah. I mean, this is valid, but I think. I think what what I'm starting to realize is I think you guys are looking at this as this is a 10 out of 10 movie, except for this 9 out of 10, except for this 8 out of 10, except for this 7 out of 10, except for this 6 out of 10. Isn't You're starting from you 10. Rate things? No, for well, for me, particularly, I'm going at this going. This is a fucking impossible challenge to take this property, to take Super Mario Brothers and make it into a movie. They've done it before and come up with completely something fucking different because you have to. That that task is so difficult. And so I'm looking at it as they're starting at fucking zero out of ten. And then they and then they cast Chris Pratt and they're starting at negative one out of ten, right? And they've got to build it up. And so I think for me, the experience was going to this movie expecting so little off of a whole bunch of people's reviews, including yours, Kyle, 
and then watching it and being like slowly building it up and being like, no, this is actually working a lot better than people are shitting on it for. And I'm not saying it's a perfect movie, but like building it up from zero, they have accomplished so much with this movie that was very difficult for them to do. And they did it and they don't get to tend sure. There are plenty of ways to 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 criticize the movie. And a lot of your criticisms are valid. But I am just surprised at how well it does work. Yeah. And I think I I tend to rate movies on my enjoyment more yeah. heavily like i don't care if they never made a mario movie i would be okay if they made they made this and i just didn't enjoy watching the movie i'll probably never watch it again um like sitting down to watch just... it but and meanwhile i would go rewatch like six of the past best animated movies although i wouldn't rewatch light year i really did not like light year but like luca and spider verse and mitchell's and the machines lego movie like i'll go rewatch those again those are kid adult movies. They're not straight yeah, kids they're, movies. They're, they're teen so, movies. Yeah, exactly. So it's not quite there, but I just, I just, it, to me, it felt like the movie was made in a lab to make everyone happy and things were signed off on bits and parts of it were great. I, listen, I'll give it a seven out of 10, but I rate movies on my enjoyment of them. So it's like, I did not enjoy watching that movie. Uh, like yeah. some other people did. Everyone's entitled their own opinion. Some people really like that movie. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm happy that people really like it, and you know, good good for for Illumination and Nintendo. They made something that, as far as fans are concerned, for the most part, I think people who are really into Mario are very happy with it. I yeah. am not super into Mario. I grew up playing Mario. It was never my favorite, so I'm kind of like you, Will, where I was like, I don't really care if they make a movie or not. I just want to enjoy it when I see it. I had the yeah. opportunity to see it a second time, and I said, no thanks. I'm I'm done. Someone right. asked me right as I came out of the theater what I thought, and I actually made a voice note for them. And I said specifically, if you are a kid, like six to 10, or you're a parent of a kid, you will like this movie. Because if you're a kid, it's for you. And if you're a parent, your kid likes it, and you're more likely to like yeah. it because you see them smiling, having a good time, you're spending time with them in the theater, and it, it's, it's a good opportunity for, for bonding afterwards and stuff like that. But if you're just going as like someone who just wants to see a good movie, it's not necessarily tailored for totally. that experience. So did, that's what did I'm it make me want to go home and play through all the Mario games. You're sure as hell it did uh, because I love Mario and I enjoy Mario. But yeah, I, I really, and I agree with you. It's a Hercu Herculean task, an impossible task to take an IP like that. And I feel the same way with like yeah. the upcoming Street Fighter movie and stuff like that when they're trying to encompass an entire genre, the entire, like they took, I, I agree with you, well, man. They took all of Mario and tried to make it into a movie and it worked out way better than it should have. And I a hundred percent agree with that. And it probably works that way. It worked. I mean, Mortal Kombat has failed it about eight times now. And I think they did better than the Mortal Kombat movies. So I agree with you there, but just, and again, I want to be clear because people are yelling at each other that, personal opinion i just didn't enjoy it as much as other people i don't think that's it, it is a that's 50 fair. i don't think it's a 50 40 30 i think there's a nice mix in there where it could be and i think that movie falls in the variance of did you enjoy the movie or didn't you enjoy that movie where you lean on the score of the movie i think um because there's a lot of movies i don't enjoy that are 10 out of 10s because they're beautiful masterly shot things and there's things that yeah. are two out of tens that i love um, Van Helsing being one of them. I love Van uh, Helsing. It's such a good Steven movie. Summers but it is, is so not. Great. It is not a ten out of ten, Kyle. Yeah, it is uh, not. It's, heart, it's, it it's like a four out of ten, but <laughs> it's, it's so like great. Three out of 10. Yeah, I, I think you nailed it when you said people. People are people are placing too much of their criticism in their personal enjoyment of the movie. And I'm not asking everybody to love this movie or hate this movie. Like yeah. my seven out of 10 is largely based on, you know, I personally enjoyed watching it. I, I, I liked the nostalgia. I had largely the same problems you guys had. But for me, that seven out of 10 was like, holy shit, they made a competent and enjoyable and cohesive Super Mario Brothers movie. Like how given where they started from. And yeah. that's I, that that I'll for me is the that. key thing. That's just like and, and, you know, animation looks fantastic. The the score is incredible. All the little Easter eggs, etc. Uh, you know, half the characters are very good. I, I'll say compared to the fucking D and D movie, seventy five percent of the jokes landed versus seventy five percent of the jokes not landing. And it's just like, but again, that's like flip flopped for a lot of people because like I enjoyed the D and D movie. I didn't think it was great, but, but would you say seventy five percent of the jokes landed specifically in the D and D movie? That that's what I mean. 
I mean, I would I, say the I same laughed. amount of jokes. Yeah, like I. But I, also, D and D was skewed more adult too. Yeah. Like there were things in the Mario movie, I would definitely have laughed at if I was a kid. And I don't mean that in the way that I don't find it funny now. But like, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. things that kids specifically find funny that are funny. So yeah. I think I think I would equate them the same child Mario, adult D and D. Yeah, I, I'm funny. just saying. I'm just saying <laughs> that movie is such a fucking challenge to make. And I'm surprised they were able to pull it off that yeah. well. I just, I don't think that should be the baseline. Like it, it's not the baseline because you can't rate goes, every movie to, like that. <laughs> it goes back to, are yeah. you building from zero and giving them points for things? Or are you starting at 10 and I taking th- points away? I think that the difference for me and me, I don't want to speak for you, Will, but like it's, it's more on, did this work for me? on on a watchability level and then from there yeah. from that perspective you can go into more details about technicality and 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 plotting and pacing and, and stuff like that it's too yeah. subjective though but it's too subjective yeah i, well, I mean you know, i see where i mean that, yeah. but that's but, the like, problem talking about this. the point of it <laughs> no 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 my my point is you can judge things obje- it is possible to judge things objectively and that's what we should strive towards. And that's kind of my view towards criticism. I, I, don't, view, I don't agree with that. So that's, that's fair. For, me, that's for fair. me personally, for me personally. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. fair. Yeah. yeah, I would say if I evaluated things Ian's way, I would agree with Ian. If I evaluated things Kyle, Kyle's way, I would agree with Kyle and me. So like from that standpoint, I think we're all in agreement from the yeah, various ways yeah. we're coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like... Again, take any other property and try to mix them all together and create that movie. Like that was a cohesive movie that made references and was good and had all its some of its. But just to be clear, just to give it even more credit, like you mentioned Street Fighter, the Street Fighter games have had stories in them. You know, the Mortal Kombat games have had stories in them. The Mario games have largely just not had a story other than at the most things have gone wrong. You need to get there at the end to get things back. And so for them to inject that much into a blank canvas makes it even better as opposed to last of us. Like that's fucking crib notes, like 90% of it. It's still well done, but you got the story ready made for you. You're adapting you know, that's, something that's already basically yeah. a movie. So. And, and do I <laughs> exactly, think yeah. the D and D movie achieved the same amount of working D and D stuff into it as the Mario movie did? I don't think so. Mario no. movie way more. Yeah, not as but effectively. I think, yeah. But I also think that works better for Mario than it does D and D. I think the D and D movie would have been worse if they did that. What the, what the package is like? What totally, totally. totally. Half the, half the shit they tried to get in the D and D movie just sounded like lore blather, where you're like, yeah, they went a okay. little too far on some of the right stuff. But they toned it well, and I and I I will agree with you. I think Mario was way more successful in that specific regard. Um, but just don't make another one. <laughs> I mean, I mean, actually, honestly, just, it made me happy for the with... next Mario movie. I, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do, though, because they did so much. But I think it, so. they've established everything. They can make an Odyssey or Danny they can DeVito make a Galaxy Sporeo. or they can make like, I don't yeah. want another nostalgia Sports. filled Mario movie. I just want like that was the Force Awakens was supposed to be. I want the break off Mario movie now, like the one that is just following Shy the, Guy the, or just the Guardians Luigi's of the Mansion. Galaxy of the Mario universe. Yeah, like I would watch a donkey. Well, not. I thought Seth Rogen was terrible, but I would watch a Donkey yeah. Kong movie with just the Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, they lead too much in his, there was like three different sections where they were like, okay, Seth, do your laugh. And we're just going to put that in the movie by itself. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like, um, let's, I, I think, I think if we can close it out with, would you recommend people go see this movie? And, and Kyle, you can add more, but I think you kind of already stated yours. Did you have more you wanted to add on recommending this movie or not? I mean, it's fine. Go see it if you're if you're a fan of Mario, if you want to see something like you said, Ian, competent. But personally, I wanted something a lot more uh, and I didn't get it. And so I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. But it's mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. You want to go in? Yeah, I mean, I'll just say like. They did the nostalgia and the references and the Easter eggs so well that if you have enjoyed playing any fucking Mario game, you should go see this movie. Um, it's well made enough that there's a good chance you're going to at least have a decent time. <laughs> you know, I don't think you're going to absolutely hate the amount of time you spend with it and you're going to love the references. So, yeah, go see it. I think if you have a kid, go to the theater because that's probably a great theater experience for a kid. 
and it's hard to see movies that are just kid movies these days that will also be great for you as an adult. I think if you're just an adult and you like Mario, wait for it to come out on some sort of streaming service because you oh, yes. you will get those smiles without paying the prices uh, and forced to buy and, popcorn. And the video and audio quality will almost guarantee be better than be better. any theater um, you go to. <laughs> yeah, because I think... Uh, I don't think those references are worth a Coke and a smile. I think they're worth a seltzer and a smile from the fridge. Um, so yeah. go, go grab. Some. That's fair. Um, that's going to be the Mario talk. That was fun. Um, I'm going to hit the outro music here. It's not going to do anything. It's going to, it's going to really think, there we go. It was literally frozen on it. Folks, uh, if you like local chat, you can go ahead. Well, you had to listen to the podcast, but anyways, go ahead. Subpixelfilms.com brings you straight to our link tree where you can go check out all of our stuff. Uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, uh, if you're part of the Discord, you can join the Discord from the links here uh, below the episode. Uh, we're going to be doing some multiplayer stuff, just hanging out. Uh, it's not being streamed or anything. We're just hanging out in the server, having fun, uh, playing board games and such. So please come hang out with us Friday night. Uh, and then Saturday, I believe at 5 p.m. Eastern, Ian, Stu, and I are going to be playing some old weird games on the rebranded Scanlines series. Kyle Bailey, Ian Gibson, thank you so much, both of you, for joining me. Oh, and don't forget tomorrow, Kyle's video is coming out. I'm probably awesome. going to be editing it for like eight hours tonight, but yeah, it'll, be, it'll be out tomorrow. Check for that. And we'll see you all next week. <laughs>